<laughs> Not that we'll dig that deep yeah. in there, but go ahead. I mean, that would be for a that would be for a plumber, and plumber doesn't even care. He sees that, he yeah. sees the marking, and he starts calculating how long of a power snake he's gonna need if he needs one. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. You just... That's how deep your plumbing, plumbing is. Just in case you ever decide you want to do some landscape modifications here. Okay. That gives you an idea of where your water line is at. Okay. They're plumbing right now, so we're gonna go back around mm -hmm. the other way, and then we'll get a look at this. Okay. Here, here's your front porch. Right there. Right. Okay, there. Front porch right there. You're gonna have a walkway, three and a half foot wide uh, walkway mm -hmm. coming from here to your driveway. So I'm just gonna walk in that direction. Yeah. Right and it turns L and driveway. Right here. Okay. Boom. Here's your driveway. Your walkway will be right here. Some people ask me, I've seen houses. Why they, they don't go that way? <laughs> yeah, I said, again, homeowners do what homeowners do. It's, later on. Yeah, yeah later, later on. on. Yeah. And they're like, oh, is that what it is? I said, yeah. It's an add-on. Yep. I'm going to discuss lighting in a little bit, but there's your porch light. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let's go this way, so I'm going to try and keep you under cover as much as possible. Okay. No worries. I have a hard hat if you need me to wear it. When that tile comes flying down, it doesn't. And then they do the right thing. Every time before I cross the caution tape, I'm looking up and looking yeah. up here. So they don't throw yeah. things at you. And, yeah. they, and they do the right thing. They caution people. They were up on top. Okay. Even though our, our roofers, when they cut, they stage their scrap on the roof. Uh -huh. And then they get a great all lift with a box and they take all their debris and put it in that box and haul. And it has low voltage wire wrapped tight on it. This one you'll never see again. I'm just showing you. Okay. Tight, but your address light will It'll be, be there. right there. Okay. So your address will be there. Okay. But I'm going to discuss this in a little bit. Now here, once we get energized and pressurized, and this means we have no gas, no electric on this side here. Yeah. yeah. Your utilities are right underneath here. Okay. Yours and your neighbors. Okay. Utilities are down deep, as deep as the sewer, sewer lateral. Yeah. So about five to five and a half feet deep. It's gonna be excavated, found a trench, five feet deep trench, coming this way, one that way. Okay. See, our box is this side yeah. too. That trench right here will come to here. Okay. Now, at the deepest part of the trench will be your electrical conduit. Uh-huh. A, a four-inch conduit that's going to come down under the uh, foundation. There's already a, a riser to tie into that. Yeah, yeah. So now your electrical is going to be at uh, five feet. One foot on top of the electrical will be your gas, what we call your gas riser, your gas line. Right. That riser... <coughs> Approximately right here. Okay. Your gas riser will come up. The gas riser and then connects the gas, in, the, the into gas the house. Valve. Yep. And this in between is where your gas meter will go. This here for us is just an air gauge because we do have to uh, pressure test pressure, the lines yeah. for all inspections. So now that will be at about four feet deep. Now one foot on top of the gas comes your low voltage communications conduit, which is the red and black oil conduit there. Okay. It's gonna come through the foundation into this box, exterior communications oh, box. Oh, okay. That is where your data wire, your television cable, and your future fiber optics will oh. come into here. Okay. Okay. So uh, in between, in between, uh, Equipment, when I say one foot on top, we call it one foot of shading, which is one foot thick of sand mm -hmm. with a wide strip of caution tape as a warning yeah. uh, device. Okay. And the reason they do that now is because PG&E has changed a lot of their safety procedures and policies mm -hmm. because of too many accidents and deaths. Oh, wow. Okay, so now, anytime you want to trench or dig, yeah. it says 
call 811. Uh-huh. So they okay. know, tell you where so the lines are. So then they come and survey your property. Yeah. And at this time, they're going to survey they, their property too. And they're going to mark your gas and electric locations. Right. To avoid those yes. deadly incidents. Yeah. Okay? okay. So now, being that your gas meter is going to be over here, and this is probably why that dot is there. Sure. Okay. Behind, about a foot behind your gas meter, this is where your six foot wood fence and three and a half wood gate will be. Right okay, here, right okay? there. So now I'm gonna measure five feet out. So it's gonna give us an idea of where the property stops. Yep. Corner, okay. right there. Right there. Okay, yep. Half so way. from there, fence all the way back. Okay? okay. And then your gate is gonna be here. Uh, on the other side, there. There is no deal. No, here. yeah, it's all right. Okay. All right. So now, all of these houses come with three um, hose bibs plumb standard. Okay. We have the main one on the other side. Okay. We have a second one on this side to take care of any water and needs along the side. Mm -hmm. There's one main one in the, in back. the back. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. Every house has a garage man door. All of our man doors are three feet wide, but they're only six foot eight tall. Okay. Okay. It is it is a wider uh, man door easier access to get stuff in and out. Yeah. Usually these are smaller, but this is the same width as your entry door. You're right, okay? three foot. There's going to be a concrete stoop that we're gonna pour here. It's gonna come out about three feet, come this way, and then this way right here. So when you do come out and stand here, mm -hmm. you're gonna be on concrete. Once you start walking or walking, you'll be back on graded dirt. Okay. okay. And then, when people pour, most like most people do, pour concrete around their yeah, house, all right? the way through. Then that just gets trashed. It goes in the trash because they remove it and they pour all brand new, yes. even yeah, not attached uh, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, on the uh, inside of the garage in this location, this is where your tankless water heater will. Be. Okay. The tankless water heater vents, vents. to the outside, mm -hmm. and it will also drain to okay. the outside. Okay. Copper. Pressure relief, high mm -hmm. pressure, low pressure. This is your condensation line for your tankless water heater. The water heaters now have condensation lines, okay? Mm. This right here, this is your heating and air conditioning condensation, primary condensation line. Oh, okay. So now with the new equipment, mechanical equipment, whenever you run your uh, AC in the summer, yep. or, it or, drips. <laughs> or heater yeah. in the winter, it's gonna drip. Older homes, only when your AC runs, okay? So my mom has uh, those, but it's closer to the AC unit. Okay. Yeah. So this one's lined all yeah. the way to the back. So now that's that. Yeah. We're gonna be coming this way here. Okay. Now here, come There's around this where the AC. condenser unit will be. The condenser is gonna sit on a three and a half by three and a half concrete slab. Mm -hmm. The three slab we usually pour at least six inches away from the foundation, so when it does come on, it eliminates vibration. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's going to be here. 220 power supply source for it will be right here. There will be a metal weatherproof box here. Right. Inside that box, there will be a fuse or a bus bar. Okay. Pull the fuse or bus bar off, power is gone. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. But only a service technician should worry about yeah, that. Yeah, no. But anyways. Right next to the condenser by code, within 20 feet of a condenser, we must wire a what we call a service outlet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will be a GFI outlet here. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there's no service technician working on this and you need power to do some work on the backyard, you can have power here. Okay, and you will also have power at the patio. Okay, so this is there now. Our backyard walking this way. This right here, this is where the property ends. Meet, yep. Yeah. There's a nail there, but there's a pin there. So anyways, your fence is gonna come, and it's gonna come to right about right there. Okay. Okay. And then this is gonna be all your back fence line. See where those uh, stakes are coming out of the ground there? But yes. That will be your uh, the other corner. Okay. This gives you a an idea of the size of the backyard. Yep. Okay. Now, <coughs> come this way here. You can stand here. I'm just going to point to it. Okay. Here, that is your hood vent. Anytime you're cooking and you use your hood exhaust, oh, it's going to vent right the there. Back. Okay. 
Now, they're saying one inch ABC pipe with a 90 degree elbow pointing down right there. Yep. That pipe is plumbed in between the ceiling and the floor, and it stubs out at the laundry room floor. Okay. It's a little drain. For the drain, yeah. For the wash. Where's okay. the dryer's vent? Is this the same? Roof. Oh, it goes through oh, the roof. Yeah, we're, we're going to get there. And oh, okay. I'll show you that. Okay. Now, here, this is the third hose bit. Yep. You got a hose bit right there, and you have a free wire for what we call backyard landscaping. If you ever want to do some any kind of irrigation in the backyard oh okay you have a water line there and you have low voltage wiring there we're we're gonna find that wire along with the main wire at the main wire uh -huh, line. yeah we're gonna find it in the garage okay. okay we have access here because they put the wrong window panels they put them with grids and they don't have grids oops okay, so, anyways <laughs> they'll um, fix that this right here this is now a standard barbecue gas line yep okay the way you see it now is the way you're going to find it. Once you get a grill, then you're going to have to turn the gas off, put your valve in, mm -hmm. put your uh, ad uh, kit adapter on your grill to from from propane to gas and grill away. Yeah. Now, and you don't need to buy that thing. <laughs> Mom has it too. Patio. This is a foundation footing already. There's concrete already down in there and there's rebar. Right. So this is part of the house foundation here, along with this right here. Right. So when when they pour this concrete here, they clean all that up real good, expose all the concrete, and then they pour the rest. Yeah. Meaning if at some time in the future you find yourself having to demo this concrete because you're gonna try to match maybe pool concrete all together. When you get to here, your concrete is going to be 12 inches wide, approximately 15 inches deep. Okay. Okay? Same with that. So don't go deep because no. then you're disturbing the foundation. Right. Okay? Uh, sliding glass door from the uh, dining to the uh, patio. That's a six foot wide door, uh -huh. eight foot tall. Here at the patio, you have a GFI outlet also for any use. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh, two uh, patio can lights, all the switches are inside. Property corner. Okay. I'm on one neighbor, you're on yours, you're on your neighbors, and then this other neighbor back there. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Right, the casita. Oh, the kitchen. Oh, kitchen. I'm sorry. This is the main water service here. This is where your other uh, low voltage control wire is for okay. your landscape irrigation. Yep. This stop out is gonna be used by the landscaper. There's gonna be two valves that are gonna be set here. One valve is for your drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. The other one for your sprinklers. Okay. Main when water you, shut off. Main water shut off is yep. here. No tools needed. Once you turn yep. that off, everything is off. Right. The landscaper will install his own uh, ball valve, half turn valve here. So if you ever do do some landscaping, mm -hmm. you can turn that water off only without having to turn the right. house water the off. House, yep. Okay. Fence line here, we go about a foot back here, right about here, six foot wood fence to the corner and all the way back. Okay. Cool. All right. So this stuff is before the fence? It's exposed. Everything has to be accessible. Oh, so I see. Your stuff is there. One foot back. Yeah. Right about the here. Fence. fence. Okay. Fence to here and then back. It's done differently now. Mm -hmm. My okay. mom's house, it's actually behind. <laughs> uh, yeah, like like my house. Uh -huh. 
not on this side, but on the garage side, yeah. I have my fence to the front corner of right. the house. And people can't fool with now, this. Watch you know. this. Garage, this is the back side of your utilities here. 200 amp main panel right here. Now, these houses here, we're building these houses on a 2022 codes, 2023 permits. <laughs> Those houses over there, the houses on the other side, <laughs> are more up to date. Yeah. Oh, codes, later. 2022 okay. construction permits. Meaning this, we're more you up to should date. be spending a little bit less on your energy yeah. bills, depending on usage, than the casita houses that are over there. Oh, good. That are already homeowner occupied. Now, yeah. if they have a sub panel over there, it means they paid for it because they wanted to have more space for additional circuitry later okay in this case now they're standard okay, okay so now i'm going to explain this is the 125 amp sub panel here okay it gets standard with these houses now the minimum that the new code tells us we must wire and you have more than that here circuit number one there's four circuits that we must wire to this uh, sub panel first circuit is your exterior lighting circuit must come into the sub panel your kitchen refrigerator circuit must come into this sub panel and then two interior lighting circuits must come into this panel why let's call it an earthquake okay mm -hmm. power outage extended power outage their food is going to go bad mm -hmm. they're going to be in the dark unless they have flashlights or something else now here we have this box here. This is where you can tie in a battery mm. to power up these circuits minimum. There's more than that here. And then your exterior, you can turn your lights on. Mm -hmm. Your interior, you can turn your lights on and not be in the dark and you will not lose your food. Yep. Okay. But just counting the amount of wires, there's more. Okay. But that's minimum required by code. Okay? You understand that? And that's what mm -hmm. this is. Okay? okay. So when they come and do the electrical finish, you're gonna have spare spaces yeah, here for you're that i have more here so yeah. whatever your plan is to do in this house if this is not enough i want to see this house <laughs> because uh nasa might see you from space <laughs> oh look at that light. that house over there. that is lit up yeah. all right all but right. anyways you have plenty good okay? good now here versus over there now all of our electric vehicle charging station pre-wires are 50 amp standard if they have a 50 amp circuit over there, they paid extra because their circuits are 30 to 35. Now this one here, this is standard. So this is something you didn't pay for. Oh, this I, is standard. I thought I had an option. Yeah. I, they keep putting it on and I keep telling them. So do I get my credit back? If you're charging, <laughs> give them credit. Yeah, back. give this my credit standard. back. You're so right. You I, paid, yes, I did. They have to credit you. See, I have yeah. an electric car. <laughs> yeah, they have yeah. to. But now that doesn't mean anything. No. This would always be here. Yeah. But not to a... 50 amp max okay it would be a 30 30 to 35 amp which it is works enough for three that. of those yeah cars. yeah okay so anyways but alex with the big truck and the big everything and i need more power i want to upgrade mine to uh. 50 amps if i'm living over there i have to pay extra uh -huh. if i'm buying here I have to pay extra. okay it's good to know okay this is a uh clean out interior Did clean out an extra for me? i don't remember Okay, interior clean out right there, that's for the plumber. We used to plumb this clean out to the outside, but because of the all, uh, 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 updated PG&E safety codes, we're okay. no longer to plumb any water near electric or gas. Oh. So we have to turn it to the inside of the garage. Okay? Oh, okay. Now here, remember the two, the one wire wrapped on the hose bib over there? Yeah. In the back yeah. and the one at the main? Yeah. That's these two here. This is where your timer right the irrigation timer will be for it will plug into this out here okay. now as of 2020 and newer the electrical codes change all of your uh outlets in the garage they're all 20 amp okay. outlets people over there they have 20 amp outlets also okay yeah. so this will be an outlet here now this one here will be your garage gfi outlet okay this outlet will look just like this one yep here. okay this will control these outlets and the standard garage outlets any additional outlets that you pay for yeah this will not control okay 
So now that's that. Now this one here. We do know we get the garage door open here standard. <laughs> uh, standard, they have to pay for it. The, yeah, yeah they, because we went over there. It's like, you guys yeah, got yeah. no garage door opener. Yeah, no, no. There, there, was, there was, uh, um, theirs is uh, optional. My niece lives over there. She has a garage door opener. We went and put it in yeah. after. Same, oh. I did the same thing with my sons. They got a Bonadelli house. Once we signed escrow, yeah. I went and put it in okay. uh, garage door opener. Here... That's what you have. Now, this guy here, this we label as, to us, is known as a temporary GFI outlet. There's a breaker inside this box here oh. dedicated to just this outlet. Okay. Here. So now, when pg &E comes and sets an electric meter here, we will turn the main 200 amp breaker on and this breaker on. And that, well, that what that will mean is that only this outlet will be hot. The rest of the house will still be dead. Okay. Then the workers can come and plug in here their equipment and keep working inside their, the house rather than using generators. Okay. okay. Now, at the end, when the electricians come and do their electrical finish, they usually take this out, put it in the trash, and they cap the wires inside the box uh -huh. for safety uh -huh. and put a blank plate on here. Okay. Okay. They do the same thing over here. They take it off the breaker, cap the wires, leave them inside the box for safety. What does that mean? We leave you with a pre-wire. The other option is we pull everything out, we throw everything in the trash. Okay. Now, if in the future you need one more 20 amp outlet in this garage for whatever reason, huh? all you have to do is get your breaker, get your GFI, wire them, boom, and then that's back. Why don't, why don't you just leave it? Because you will not find it in that condition. It gets abused. Oh, it gets yeah, abused. A lot of these, oh, okay. these, these guys. So you remove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We used to leave them, and then here comes a, a work order, <laughs> warranty. Hey, that's an ugly. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. That in no, his life. I see. Even though I told you so, now you want a new. Yep, yeah, I want a new one. So they just like, okay, just take them off. Take it away. And then the other option, like I said, was just to take this <coughs> off, take everything off, throw everything away, and okay. leave nothing. Okay, so we're leaving a pre wire. Okay. Oh, you got lots of outlets. Yeah. So now, this right here. This half inch rebar, this is your main foundation Ufer ground, okay? This is where everything grounds out to. Your panel grounds out to here, sub panel grounds out to here. Your low voltage communications panel grounds out to there. And then your solar also grounds out to here. Oh, okay. okay? So what you're gonna find here at the end, a blank vinyl plate, mm -hmm. okay? Same thing here, you will find a blank vinyl plate but that plate will have a sticker that will say ev, EV capable to identify it it's like that's my ev outlet yeah and i have to hire an electrician to put that out you'll know by the size of the box yeah okay? now here um this panel here gets grounded a second way and a second form to right here this is what we call steel bonding ground okay it is clamped onto the steel gas line mm -hmm. Again, here on this mud ring, you will find a blank plate. Okay? okay. Not labeled, nothing. If you ever get curious, take off the two screws, two screws, empty space. Oh, there's a clamp there with a copper mm. wire. That's a ground station. Okay? Okay. So that'll be that. Now, this box here, this is a 15 amp um, exterior lighting uh, timer switch. Okay? Timer. This is what it does. The electricians usually pre-program these to a three hour delay. This is what it means. If you turn your outside lights, your side yard light, mm -hmm. your driveway coach lights, mm -hmm. your front porch light, or your back patio lights on. Okay. Say you turn them on at nine o'clock at night. Come midnight, if nobody has turned them off, this guy, I'll turn it turns on. Them on. Oh, so you don't have your lights on all night long. Power saver thing. Yeah. So sure. now the technology and the codes are: if you don't like to save energy, we can do something to help you save energy. Okay. And use this. Interesting. And there's more. There's more that I'm gonna explain as we sure. go along. Yeah. All your solar equipment is inside the garage. Yep. Okay. On a, a new house, so and old houses, everything goes on the outside. Anyways, so your Solar breaker panel will be here. Your mm -hmm. solar disconnect will be here. Mm -hmm. So anytime any solar company needs to do services or anything to the solar, they have to have access to the garage. Otherwise, they can't, okay? Mm. Another wall clean out here for this vent that goes up 
to the hallway. I think there's a hallway bathroom upstairs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Light switch to your outside light. Door will be here. Yep. Now, uh, tankless water heater. Yep. Location right here. Yep. Hot and cold. That water heater that we're going to install will be a gas water gas heater. Water so here's our gas line yep. and here's our power to, to it. plug it yep. into. The water heater will have a built-in thermostat. So anytime you want to change your water temperature, mm -hmm. you have to come here and temperature up or temperature down. Yep. Now we are also pre-wiring for 220 here. If you find this to get too expensive, suddenly PG&E raises their gas <laughs> prices outrageously high. Mm. Right? You have an option. Go. I can remove this tank of water electric, heater go. and get me an electric yeah. one, 220. Here's my electric power. Okay. And then run off of purely solar power and oh. save energy That's and money that way. Okay? So if you're happy with the performance of this and your build is manageable, yeah. but a second uh, electric vehicle shows up and I need two outlets, you got 220 here that will handle that. Oh, okay. 20, yeah. Twenty four seven. I see. So every it's day. not like an ex yeah. another outlet. <laughs> I tell people every day and holidays. So, or being that this is a tandem garage, yeah. You know, if you like to weld and build things and use higher voltage, shop. <laughs> you have a two twenty right there yeah. that you can use while you're doing something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's that standard twenty amp garage outlet. Okay. Okay. Now, when you turn on this switch, it will turn on a four-foot LED light fixture here and another four-foot LED light fixture here. So oh. Both on. Okay. There's another switch there right. that will also turn these two on. So depending which fire door you're coming yeah. in and out of, there's a light switch. Three-way okay. switch. Okay. All right. Now here, another standard garage outlet, okay. 20 amp, 20. okay? Mm -hmm. We're gonna turn the corner this way. And another one. You have another 20 amp outlet here. Okay. We're gonna keep coming. So here's our fire door coming from the house into the garage. Right. Light switch right here. Now here, this is part of our garage door opener pre-wire. Oh, okay? okay. This is where a wall-mounted garage, garage door opener door. will okay. go, okay? Light switch, we'll turn those two lights on. Now here, we cut the corner here. There's gonna be another switch here. This will be an occupancy sensor switch. You turn the lights on, you got in your car, you drove out, closed the door like, uh -huh. damn. It I turns off, the yeah. garage lights on. This switch will turn them off. Yeah. Okay? Just like your bathrooms. Yep. But now, I'll discuss it's now this in now. The garage. <laughs> You'll have occupancy sensor switches in the garage in the bathrooms and in the laundry room. Right. Okay. So that. It's like the McCaffrey. Another standard 20 amp outlet. So as you can see, you have outlets on every one all the way around. And then you have your power for your garage door opener there. Uh-huh. Pre-wire there. So right. Pre-wire already for your safety sensor uh, beams. Okay. Okay. Now, on center of every garage door opening, we put solid wood backing. So no matter where they put the rail at, yep. they're gonna be on solid wood. They'll hit so something. Solid yeah. Inside, okay. Okay. The red caps you see in the ceiling here, those are your uh, fire fire sprinklers. Fire sprinklers okay. Yeah. Now there's one other thing. There's this uh, nail here. Uh huh. With data wire wrapped around that nail and secured with white electrical tape. We're gonna chase that data wire. It comes in this direction here. And it comes to right here. Okay. Now I show it to you because once we sheetrock, you will never see this wiring again. The purpose of that is if in the future you install a wireless alarm system in oh, this house. Okay. You can put your alarm keypad here. Okay. And then over there, they can put a motion sensor. So if you accidentally, my neighborhood, yesterday, two car garage, two cars in the garage, mm -hmm. garage full of stuff, mm -hmm. garage dark, door oh, wide open, broken. 4 30 in the morning. Oh, geez. Now, no, not broken. We do that. We go to sleep. Nobody, nobody, oh, nobody no, way. Close, close the, the door. door. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. but once I arm my, my, 
uh, alarm. Yeah. If I go in there it'll trigger and it. senses it'll trigger the alarm, yeah. and I better be running. Okay. Okay. So that's what it is here. Okay. Okay. Back to the garage here. There will be a low voltage transformer mounted onto this box. There are two low voltage wires there wrapped around this nail. Mm -hmm. Those low voltage wires will be wired to the transformer. One low voltage wire goes to your address light. Okay. Which is right there. Yep. The low voltage is usually nine volts or less. Okay. The other wire goes all the way to, to your the entry door. Right. door yeah. door. Okay. Also low voltage. Okay. So now let's take a look. Now on this wall here, somewhere along this wall, I've seen it here or here. When we do the uh, fire sprinkler finish, yeah. the fire sprinkler company will install or set a red metal box here on the wall. Yeah. Inside that box, there's that. spare yeah. fire sprinkler heads. In case one, fa one fails, you have a spare one. Right. Okay. Cool. Now we're going to any any questions in the garage? Nope. Where you see your insulation, it means you have bedroom. Yeah, floors it's, it's a living space. Right, right. Non-occupied nope. space. That little Not occupied. Right it's a roof. The roof, up yeah. Above it. There's no bedrooms up there. Okay. Okay. And then let's let's take a look at this one. Yeah, it's then, insulated on that side. Yeah. Insulated, insulated, all the way. Okay. Now here. Uh, Eric, can you do me a favor? Uh, contact uh, uh, Uriel or uh, Mike. Have them come and bat this switch in here. That's where the plumbing is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or if That's the they might be around, yeah. Yeah. Put a put some uh, bats in there. So, anyways, so the purpose of that is yeah. Whatever keep it warm. <laughs> in the bedrooms stays up there. Whatever heater cold is in the garage stays here. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. Any any questions in the garage? No. All right. Cool. All right. So now the house. All right. Entry door. Entry door. Okay. Main house door. Three feet wide. Yep. That will also be three feet wide. Yep. Eight foot tall. Yep. Also eight foot tall. Yep. This. This is what I'm being told as of now. The standard glass door like the models and i tell people it is the privacy glass yeah you can you can't see out no it's frosted they can't see yeah. in yeah. but it allows natural light, light. to yeah. flow through anyways now the upgrade on these these are automated uh locking doors you no longer need a key for that it will be the uh -huh. standard the key lock. Yeah. that will be a standard solid door right. okay but this one here that's what you're gonna have you either enter a, a code or remote code. Oh, okay. yeah. and there cool. it opens okay? okay now equipment that will control this door okay i'm gonna take it in here and show you this closet here you have a data cable there link to security will put a what looks like a phone jack and then there's power here and i'll live here and then you're gonna find a like speaker white speaker looking device like mm -hmm. alexa mm -hmm. <laughs> that's gonna be plugged in here huh. that equipment is needed to control that door so you're able to open it and close it. okay okay all right so that's that now back over here again as you come in switches are here four switches switch closest to the door is usually your hallway lights okay mm -hmm. this light and then that light going to the garage and we okay? have the stairs uh the second switch is usually oh, okay. your porch light porch and then the third switch is usually your driveway oh, porch lights and there. then your fourth switch this is, is the stairs stair. okay? stairs now i'm going to discuss switches <coughs> hallway mm -hmm. light will be a dimming switch dimming okay stair lights dimming so now your hallways stairs and bedroom lights are all on dimming switches mm -hmm. your kitchen lights will are all on dimming switches okay, okay. all others are just standard switches okay, okay? Um, so that's that now every hallway that we walk i always tell people in these houses the way they're designed now no matter where you at in the house there's power nearby 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, if you're doing anything in this hallway, you got power here. Oh yeah. If you're doing anything in this hallway, you got power here. Yeah. Okay. If you're doing anything in this short hallway, you got power here. You don't have to be opening doors. And oh no no. Power yeah. Okay. No extension cord. So now we're gonna come in this direction here. Just curious, what's the California code for that? Is it six feet apart? California code for every outlet. There's two rules of thumbs. Two, six, and twelve. Okay. Okay. What does that mean? If I have a a, a wall, uh, uh, especially on an interior or, or occupied, uh, bigger than longer than two feet. Yeah. Boom. You have one. Right. Uh, and then from there, six, and then twelve. If it's a long wall, every twelve. Every twelve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If it's the short, da, 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 ah. cutting, yeah. So, I used to be in the architectural yeah. field, so I kind of have some background. Were you in the military? You mentioned your father. No, just my father. Yeah. I wanted to go to the Air Force, but my mom stopped me. She said, I don't want you to send you to Iraq. <laughs> now, I'm like, Mom, it's the Air Force. They don't yeah. go into for combat. Me, for me, I was, my wife spent, you know, the 10 years I spent in the military, so did my wife. Oh, okay. You know, and I said, light switch for these two lights. Mm -hmm. This, I can't remember if this one will be the uh, dimming switch, mm. or if you're coming from the house into the casita door here, mm -hmm. this switch will also turn those lights on and off. So it's on a three-way now. Okay. Normally, this would have only been the only switch because there will just have been a the wall there. Okay. 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 The, kitchenette space area here, yep. countertop here. You will have a sink and a bed disposal here. That's what this outlet here is for. Now, here you have a combination wall outlet and switch. This switch will turn that, I'll take that back. One switch will turn the disposal on and off. Mm -hmm. Another switch, let me look at this again, light. One switch is for a disposal. Another one, I a look. I got a combination here. This is the one that tells me. When I see white Romex, that's a 14 gauge, 15 amp circuit. Mm -hmm. That's for a light switch. Right. When I see the yellow 12 gauge, that's a 20 amp circuit. There will be an outlet here. Okay. A countertop outlet. Oh, okay. okay. Now, over here, there will be a outlet. Yeah here okay and then that outlet down there for this that'll disposal. be for a garbage disposal yeah. meaning yeah, disposal. when you open the door to the cabinet yep. the sink cabinet on the side there will be a switch to turn the disposal on okay okay and then you have a window here some okay. uppers right here yeah yeah uh yes yes okay. mm -hmm. lower end okay. now outlets here you have one outlet there which is a 20 amp mm -hmm. that's cool they're usually 15 Another 20 amp here, another 20 amp. Oh, cool. They're usually 15 amps, so these mm -hmm. are 20 amps. Okay. That's cool. Um, this is just an opening, no door. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Once you close those doors, it's private. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you come into the bedroom here, you have three switches here. One switch will turn those lights back there on and off. Okay. And then two switches here will control your ceiling fan free wire. Okay. Being that we don't have any other. Uh, Lighting here, there will be a light fixture here. Okay. And that will be a dimming switch. Uh, heating and air conditioning register there. Okay. And then here you will have your, let me check these outlets because they should be 15, okay. <laughs> outlet. But, but there's a lot. Outlet, 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 outlet. outlet, outlet. All over. Yeah. Okay. More than probably needed. Yeah. Yep. What's that brown wire? The curly one right here. Okay. So now this wire here. This house with the casita, mm -hmm. without the casita, it has uh, three uh, thermostats. Now we're gonna find four. This thermostat here will control the heating and cooling temperature of this casita by itself. Oh, okay. okay. So if there's nobody in the house, but only this occupant is here. They control their this heating. This thermostat yeah. will heat up and cool this place down and they don't care about the rest of the house. Gotcha. What temperature it is. Makes okay? sense. All right, so now this way. Bathroom. There will be a privacy door here. Uh -huh. here. Yep. Three switches. One switch will turn your vanity light on, light on and off. Mm -hmm. Another switch will turn your ceiling light on and off. Mm -hmm. And then a third switch will turn your exhaust fan on and off. Okay. One sink here. Every sink has a service outlet. 
being that this is a casita, this will probably be a GFI. Mm -hmm. On a GFI. GFI. Okay. Yeah. Toilet location toilet. here, water supply water. Right to your toilet there. Now here on the tubs, upgrade. Generations are getting taller. Okay. Mm. Yep. Prior to uh, the 2022 codes, our tubs were only 72 inches tall. So right there. Oh, okay. Everybody's getting taller and now they're 80. <laughs> 80. Okay? Yep. And now, because they're taller, we're plumbing higher. Shire, shower okay? head's higher, yeah. Shower head up there, <clears throat> downspout here for the tub, mixing valve here for the shower. Okay. Cool. Curtain rod only. Yep. Across. Okay. Yeah. The other people, if they have them this high, they have to pay extra. Oh. Race it. Yeah. Hmm. What happened when it cracked? Is this crack no, any no. issues or no? Negative. Negative. Now okay. you see how this usually cracks don't kind of go in a straight line? Yeah. Now there's a concrete corner here between the porch and the foundation, right? Right. So usually now what the, the concrete company does, they they call it a, a cold joint. They cut a joint from here out this way. Right. Okay. And then once they cut it, they fill it. It, it'll still crack, but you see that straight crack versus a crack that just goes all over the place. We might see a crack that goes in different directions, mm -hmm. but showing you that line, let me see if I can show you another line. Okay. One in the garage. Yeah, I think my last one okay. in the garage. This one, oh, here's this another is, one. This yeah. is what we don't want to happen. No. But unfortunately, it does. It is. There's no control lines, no nothing. It just comes from there, and it yeah. kind of dies over here. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a line right here. Yeah. You just don't see it because of the wall, but there's a garage corner yeah. and it comes right this way. Mm -hmm. That's the one you um, saw? Yeah. 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 Okay. If, if there was no wall, you would see the line from there all the uh -huh. way. Right, through. right. Okay. All right. So let's go back this way here. This one. Is that just because the foundation pad just kind of no, set oh, that way? No. no. It's, uh, it seems to feel like there's a slope going that way. There, there's no slope. No. But um, yeah, usually these don't follow hills or, or downhills. Yeah. Now, one thing I tell people, because concrete does expand and retract, it will crack. That's the reason why in the garage and in the driveways and on the sidewalks you see lines. Yeah, now, the, the control ones. Closely inside those lines, there's cracks, there's cracks yeah. But we want them to be there. Right. Uh, because this floor, once the flooring goes in, you'll never see, but that one you're going to see every day. Yeah. Unless you do what some people do, fix their garages and mm -hmm. put uh, that uh, membrane. Yeah. And and make the, it real shiny. With the sparkles. Yeah. And yeah. Flakes. Yeah. 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 Flakes. Yeah. All right, so now here, this light switch will turn your entry lights on and off if you're just going straight in here, okay? okay. Now, this way, or up here, you have a small air filter location, return air. So air filter there, and another small one here. Hmm. And there's more for the house, and I tell people, when you change one, change them all. Okay. okay? Now, because this is a hallway that leads to another occupied space, such as a bedroom, this hallway must be protected. And it is protected with a combination smoke and carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So now we get into now what we call, this is just a powder, powder bath, bath, meaning toilet and sink only. There's yep. no shower, no nothing here. This is for the guests. So light switch here for this light here, mm -hmm. light switch here. For that exhaust fan there, mm -hmm. you have heating and air conditioning here, and that's about it. Yeah. You have heating, I forgot to point to it, but you have heating and air conditioning for this bathroom. All right. So there's all that. <clears throat> okay. okay. Now we're going to come this way. Door chime right here. When somebody rings the doorbell, this is going to make noise. Mm -hmm. Letting people somebody is at the door or in this case with this new technology you see who it is <laughs> and then you look at it like oh i see what's your name sir again? uh solar cell man <laughs> uh, thomas tom oh it's tom i'll look I, yeah she'll say i think i'll open the door <laughs> <laughs> all right so now this hallway here if you're coming from the garage into the house we have a service outlet here more important we have two switches here 
a hallway light switch that will turn the hallway lights on and off. Okay. So you can turn hallway lights on and off there, there, and then Yeah, here. lots of controls. We have another thermostat here. So oh. now this thermostat will control the temperature of the house first floor. First floor house, okay. okay. Not the casita, nope. not the upstairs, yeah. okay? So, got it. Now, the stairs storage um, closet. There will be a door here, right? Okay. No door here. No door. Yeah. There's a switch here on the outside, on the hallway side, that will turn this light on. Right. And off. Okay. Figure that. Now here, there will be a shelf, so you can store things here. Oh. And there will be a pole here you can hang clothes if you need to. Now this goes all the way through. Yeah. All the here. Yeah. So this will be all finished flooring, yeah. textured, painted, baseboard, everything. Perfect. Okay. So. This this wall used to go straight before, and then we took it off. Yeah. To allow for more space. More storage. I mean, this was already big enough, but like, yeah. I can use that space. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. All right. So that's that. Technically, you can go all the way underneath the steering even carry case. And this is where I tell the guys, don't get in trouble, man. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna end up in there. <laughs> no, no. But here you come around. We have three switches here. Okay. One switch is gonna control your six LED fan lights up there. Okay. okay. And then two more switches will be dedicated to you. You will have a ceiling fan there. Okay. Okay. Just like you will have a ceiling fan in the master bedroom now. Yeah. Okay. That's the standard with these houses. See, we only have a fan. Ah. Okay. So now for outlets. Outlet there. Outlet there. Outlet outlet, 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 outlet. Now, television, this is standard now versus before it was a, a, a uh, upgrade. Upgrade. Yeah, the in wall. <laughs> HDMI, we call it flat screen provision wiring now. So oh, you, you got provide HDMI the wire. cabling here, nice. power here for your wall mounted television, HDMI cabling, additional television cabling here, and power here mm -hmm. for your uh, these, uh, games, VCRs games, now, yeah. DVRs, and DVR, all that yeah. other yeah. stuff. Okay? And game systems. And they tell me this link is tells me all this wiring here will handle any technology today. From mm -hmm. three, five years from now, I, I don't know what's going <laughs> to be on the market. Okay. Virtual reality. But that's uh, that's what we have. Okay. Heating and air conditioning registers blowing in this direction. Oh, okay. Okay. Switches here. Okay. If you're coming from the backyard or, or going to the backyard, one switch will turn your patio lights on and off. Okay. The other switch will turn these lights on and off. Okay. So you can find your way into the house. Yeah, okay? the dining. Yeah. Sliding glass door there. Dining area here. You have a 20 amp outlet there, a 20 amp outlet there, and a 20 amp outlet there. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you might have a table here. Feel free to use any one of those three outlets and plug in any of those small countertop appliances. All right. Okay. Now we come this way here. If I'm coming from this direction into the house, I have two switches here. Mm -hmm. I can turn my kitchen lights on or my dining lights on. Okay? okay. Right here. Okay. So now I'm coming into here. This changed names. It used to be the home management center. Now it is called the mud, mud room. room. Okay. With that said, before we used to only have a desk here nothing here mm -hmm. but now we have a bench here we have an above bench 15 amp outlet just in case you need it mm -hmm. and then we have kind of like a shoe rack thing. yeah shoe rack. we saw that yeah that bench is so you can take your muddy shoes off like it rains a lot in california <laughs> right that's what it is. okay this light switch and that light switch control these two lights okay, okay? have heating and air conditioning there open the window there okay then this brings us into the kitchen walk-in pantry. Pantry. Door here, light switch here, light up there. You're gonna have five yeah, shelf, in, shelf, shelf. Five Upstairs. Shelf all the way around for food storage. Okay? Yep. Plus your kitchen cabinet pantry. Okay. Right. When we built this house, we only had that one cabinet. This was officially the tool room. Oh. Okay. okay. Made into that was now. the home management center so yeah. so the man or gal that had that classic in the garage could make orders for that car uh -huh. Anyways, <laughs> but then i then we thought about it and i raised my hand this was a few years back 
That's it. That's a big kitchen. That's a small pantry. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, Need well, more room. Just we do. <laughs> I don't think people, guys, our tools are in the garage. Yeah. We don't store tools inside the house. No. Why don't you make this a walk-in pantry? They like that idea. Mrs. Bonadelli's like, I don't know people that are, you know, want to walk away from the kitchen to get food. I said, ma'am, when you're hungry, go walk for mine. Or here's another thought. You come in with your grocery, you just put it away. Yeah, exactly. And then, oh, actually, I'm going to start on this thing. Okay. So if I'm coming into the kitchen now, I have two switches here. When I have two switches, one switch will turn the kitchen lights on and off, and there's, there's a second switch for pendant lights. Okay. Pendant, so right? You here. have four I, pendants. Which we did order those. <laughs> two metal boxes and two plastic boxes in the center, okay? Uh -huh. So four, four um, pendants. Pendant lights. Yep. Both of these switches will be dimming switches. One, of course, is not going to work until you install your pendants. Yeah. And then you're going to be able to turn them on and off. This will be countertop space. Right. Above counter 20 amp outlet. Then you come this way. This right here, your refrigerator Fridge. space. Outlet water line for your ice maker there yep location for your built-in oven on the bottom mm -hmm. built-in uh microwave, microwave on top countertop space outlet 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 then you get into your cooktop stoves yep the cooktop will be a gas cooktop mm -hmm. that we will install so here's our gas line here's our power now we are now pre-wiring for a electric stove oh just in case this gets out outrageously expensive <laughs> And I want to change now to electric and save money. Okay, it's there. Cool. Okay. Extra wiring here for your hood exhaust. Uh huh. Countertop space, so above counter outlet, above counter outlet, and then your cabinets end right about here. Okay. And then that takes us to the kitchen island. Yep. The island has an outlet facing this way. Yep. Outlet facing that way, and another outlet facing that way. Okay. okay. Now, this outlet here will be a dual outlet meaning it's gonna be a standard outlet and a usb oh see they have the usb plug outlet you will have a, another outlet like that in the master bedroom right the rest of the bedrooms in casita don't know okay there's an outlet here down below this is where your sink is going mm -hmm. to be this is where your dishwasher and your disposal will disposal. plug into okay. that cover will be labeled as dishwasher and disposal okay this extra wire here is for your garbage disposal switch cool cool you have heating and air conditioning right above you there heating and air conditioning there i already pointed out to that one mm -hmm. right here inside you see the green caps in the ceiling those are your fire sprinkler locations sprinklers again yeah fire sprinklers in the house they are uh concealed just the round plate yeah close to the ceiling the garage ones are exposed okay enamel coated they're there right so that's where we can have accidents i was told the smoke doesn't trigger it it's actually Negative. the fire okay yeah or the heat fire heat only they yeah. are heat activated if i hold the torch to here and it reaches its set temperature yeah then it'll set <laughs> it'll pop but those will not yeah if fire advances or advances then those will go oh, well. smoke detectors when one smoke detector is activated it activates every single smoke detector in the house oh your whole house <laughs> no for anybody to say i didn't hear anything yeah if you didn't hear anything you're in a deep 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 sleep or you got your ears closed. Okay. right anyways that's how that's how we are now any questions down here nope like, upstairs time now sure all right let's go up of the two of the two two-story houses we built this is the house with the wider stairs the bianca model is like right here oh okay Small. now here somebody can actually physically be going down and somebody can be going up yeah. and the bianca like no you go first i'll wait and then <laughs> well wideness is good too because yeah, you got to yeah. haul furniture up here furniture. Yeah. The landing here is yeah good. yeah it gives you a little bit more radius to turn okay okay that's just the window there right okay this is gonna be it'd be trouble if there wasn't a window there <laughs> wrought iron railing right Right iron right there. Right, and all the line down here. All the way through. Yep. We frame in these four by four posts. Temporary. For sturdiness and yeah. safety. safety. So when this goes on, it 
it's nice and tight in there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now coming up here, there's another combination, smoke and carbon monoxide detector. Okay. okay. Service outlet. 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 Outlet, outlet. Outlet, outlet. And, and in the floor. Floor <laughs> outlet and a floor outlet. Okay. okay. Let me see who this is, because sometimes it is the office. I know, right? It feels small, huh? Here's your uh, laundry room, honey. I thought you saw the model. So it's actually up here. But you know that mud room, that can be converted to a laundry room too, really. But they don't have the plumbing, yeah. But we're gonna buy the portable. Right there. Mm -hmm. One switch will turn your stair lights on and off yep and that's their light fixture will hang from right there yep it'll be a chandelier so about yay high okay okay you will turn it on and off there on and off down there yep the other switch there will turn your lock four led cam lights on and off okay and there will be a dimming so it's okay. okay now remember you had two small air filter locations mm -hmm. in the casita and in the hallway right right bigger big air one. filter bigger air filter on this hallway oh okay so like i said when you change one change one okay well, i would buy lots of filters <laughs> yeah that's the uh that's the, the and, they're, to it. and they're different sizes yeah. so now now these two are the same size yeah i mean the two small ones are the different same size. from here yeah. Yeah. yeah so at least that's a good one. yeah switches here again one switch we'll turn that light on that switch We'll turn that light on and off. Okay. The other switch will turn on your bedroom hallway lights. Okay. On and off. Okay. The hallways. So here again, you have a service outlet there, mm -hmm. service outlet here, mm -hmm. another service outlet here, mm -hmm. another service outlet there. So no matter where you're at, there's power. Okay. Laundry room. Yep. Door here. Two switches here. One switch will turn on these two lights on and off. A second switch will turn on your house exhaust. Mm. I want to talk about that switch now. Okay. Okay. Look at this. So this one here will be your heating and air conditioning register. But now we have another one here. Oh. This will be your house exhaust register. So now this is how it works. When you turn that exhaust switch on, you will not hear it. Very, very low noise, but that's going to be extracting moisture yeah okay. yeah so now i'm gonna show you a piece of equipment we call it an e, uh, erv uh equipment mm -hmm. let me show you what it has oh the piping that's cool can you have the door you forget the model the model no, no, no. It's right here for us. So now, this is the ERB box, right? This gray box. Now notice it has four conduit or four uh, uh, duct lines coming out. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One goes to the roof. Another one. Another one there goes to the roof. Uh huh. So two duct lines go to the roof. One duct line goes to that register in the laundry room. Uh -huh. and now the fourth duct line comes. To right here. Okay. Okay, so now this is how it works. Switch on, exhaust. Yep. One pipe. One pipe going to the roof. Mm -hmm. Sends the bad quality air from here out of mm -hmm. the house. All right. The other roof pipe brings outside air into the house. Oh. That outside air blows in right through there. Yeah. So now this is where the thing you have to remember. If this switch is accidentally left on because it's so low noise and nobody can hear yeah. it. But 
it is 40 degrees outside and my heater is on and it's nice and toasty 68 degrees You're just letting here. all the cold and air i'm in walking there. by here <laughs> suddenly my head gets cold yeah like, whoa why is that thing blowing cold oh yeah that's why yeah because it's bringing outside air temperature okay in. so now question when we first started this is like why is that equipment there and i told people as i was told this is what COVID-19 left us with. So now, <laughs> if you have somebody sick in the house, yeah. you can activate that switch and extract the bad air, germs and everything, and bring outside air in. Okay. And then my niece who lives at Wisteria, she was the first one that called me. She's like, Uncle, my PC is on, but this thing is blowing hot air. It was 5 o'clock on April. Mm. 98 degrees outside because I was at the closest rodeo finals and I said walk to your laundry room My niece goes, okay, I'm here. Our both switches on or off One is off the lights. The other one looks like it's on turn it off both switches off now walk back up there I'm like, what do you feel now? Yeah. Oh, it stopped. <laughs> yeah, I said remember that the exhaust switch? She's like, oh that, that's, that's it. Right. Yeah, and then she goes uncle, but what if we have a bad fire like the ones we've had in the past couple of years and there's smoke everywhere? That thing is going to bring, if I turn the switch on, that thing is bring, bring smoke into my house? And I said, no, this no. is where I have to trust the science. That yeah. The sensor says it's it bad sucks quality it air. It, in it does not allow it to bring it yeah. down. It shuts down. Oh, cool. She's like, oh, okay. I said, if you find yourself being smoked out of your house, yeah, that that's a work order right away. Right. Something's wrong. Okay. Okay. So that's that's that. Okay. Now back to the laundry room. <coughs> Washer location here, that drain pipe that we saw over there. Mm -hmm. That's that one there. Hot and cold water lines here. Power to your washer there. Uh, dryer now. Dryer location here, as you see, it vents to the roof. Hmm. Here you will have the option to bring in a gas dryer uh -huh. or an electric. Mm. Now there will be an outlet here. Okay. We will. So we can okay. use gas or electric. Or electric. Okay, you have that option. Now here you're gonna have a base cabinet. Yep. The sink. Uh, laundry sink, and then above the counter there will be a 20 amp GFI outlet. Okay. Okay. That's this is the laundry. All right. All the way here. This space right here, from wall to wall, there's gonna be a base cabinet here, and yep. the label is a linen, linen. cabinet. Okay, countertop, nothing above it. Nope. Okay. Light switch here. If you want to turn your hallway lights on and off because you're going in there. Okay. Katie's room. If she okay. goes in her room. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at uh, this bedroom. Inside every bedroom, there will be a smoke detector. Uh huh. Okay, there's our smoke detector there. Two switches here for a ceiling fan free wire, so you will have a light fixture. Okay. Okay. I'll let you have one, two, three, four, and five. So outlets all the way around. Okay. Heating and air conditioning there. Now this window here, there will be a decorative wrought iron balcony. Right. That's why we like it. Right? It's, a, it is just a visual thing. No, I know. We're not don't, inviting anybody. Don't to stand on it. <laughs> yeah. On, right? We have solid wood backing here. Okay. Solid wood backing here, and then of course the floor joist and the floor, what we call the rim board, because when they come and install that wrought iron, uh, they need to get it in that. Yep. They bolt them, uh -huh. lag them, the lag screws into solid wood, into solid wood, so they're they're solid. Oh, good. Okay. But they're not uh, weight no. rated. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's that. So Julia um, can't stand on it. Closet standard closet. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now brings us to here uh so we we had two thermostats thermostat yep third thermostat here this thermostat here will control the temperature of the loft the laundry room two bedrooms and hallway back okay that's it okay. that's it all right so now the bathroom over there two switches here one switch for this vanity light mm -hmm. one switch for the ceiling light mm -hmm. you have heating and air conditioning up there you have two sinks right here Right. Each sink has a service outlet, okay? One of these outlets will be a GFI outlet. Okay. Meaning this, it will control power to these two outlets 
the powder bath outlet down below and then the two outlets in your master bath so if you're in the master bathroom blow drying your uh -huh. hair and you lose power you have to come here <laughs> and reset okay? okay or if somebody's down there for whatever using it come up here and reset yeah, yeah. come up here okay all right privacy door here for the shower area mm -hmm. we here we have two switches one switch for a light one switch for an exhaust fan we have an openable window we have heating and air conditioning here toilet location here water line to your toilet there okay tub is just like the one below yep downspout mixing valve shower head up there yep curtain rod okay cool, cool. all right now we're gonna go to this one here i'm gonna step over this shoe rod smoke detector there two switches there for a second bedroom fan one outlet two three okay four outlets in this room oh, i want to make sure closet here this window doesn't stare into our neighbor's window <laughs> good good because we saw a model home is like one window was looking to another window like my daughter's like i don't want this room <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's that. Now, this is the one I want to see, okay? Remember the uh, condensation line down below next to the uh, water heater? Drum? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. so that was that. Now we have two, this one here, and then that one there. If you look out this window here, there's a pipe pointing down. Yes, there is. And if you look that way, yep. there's a pipe. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. You're good. There's a pipe pointing down. Right. All right. So now we're going to determine which one is what. Usually the one over the window uh -huh. is a secondary condensation line for your heating and air conditioning. Okay. So one thing is, if somebody lives here and they see water draining from outside the window, that usually is like a non-feedback air conditioning problem uh -oh. the one down there is the one that should always be <laughs> only drain not, not up here, here yeah okay now this one here you see it and it goes that way uh-huh that way that way that way looks like to the it goes in bath no but Best it goes no. oh then down you might see there's a tub right there, that a black plastic tub. If you want, we can take a look at it when we're at the master. But we'll, okay. we'll, we'll get over there. We'll see it better. Yeah. Okay? And then I'll explain that one. Okay. All right. Any uh, questions in this room? No. It's just I a know. straightforward bedroom. All right. So now we're going to head over to the master. Master bedroom, door there, thermostat here. Okay. So this right. is the fourth one. This is just for the master bedroom closet. In the bathroom. Master bathroom. Yeah. Okay. Three switches here. One switch for a standard four LED can lights. And two switches now will control your ceiling fan here. Okay. okay. This room has one outlet there. Outlet, 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 outlets, outlet. And then here's your other uh, TV. Standard like the one down below okay right here okay yep heating and air conditioning register there openable window to the back fix windows on the sides okay okay now here let's see can i see this box <laughs> they did yes. the grid problem up here too <laughs> huh the grid on the window panel oh yeah they, yeah they yeah they made that mistake there, yeah. anyway so here here's that here's that tub pvc line yeah and it plumbed into the bottom of that tub. Yeah. Okay. Now inside that tub, there's a temperature mixing valve. Okay. That, if you see coming out of that tub, there's a blue and there's a red insulated water line uh -huh. coming out of there. That blue and red water lines are these oh, two. Oh, okay. Temperature mixing valve for your tub huh. faucet. Okay. Okay. So now, if that um, valve ever leaks, it leaks into the tub and it drains to the outside. Oh. So if you see, if you're outside and then you see water, water coming puddling out. below yeah. and coming from up there, uh oh. Then that, that's where you kind of determine okay, I did the framework. That's Fresno plumbing okay. problem. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, the one over the window. Oh, that's done okay. Dick, air conditioning <laughs> yeah. or air conditioning problem. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, closet. Closet door there. Yep. Light switch here. Two lights. Your shell will be at six feet. Okay. All the way around the way. with a pole. Okay. Okay. Then we come into this closet here. Door there. Uh -huh. Switch here. Two lights there. Now in this closet here, you have your media or something to call it the smart panel. Yep. Okay. All your television and data cables coming in here. Your tubing for your future fiber optic is coming in here. This has a built-in outlet there. It has a space for an additional outlet to be put in there. Okay. Above this here, we have another outlet. We usually label it as an alarm. Mm -hmm. If you do install a wireless alarm system in the future, it needs a control panel. The panel needs power. There's the power. Yep. Okay. And now if anybody needs to go up into the attic to do any services right or maintenance or, or work, yep. this will be your attic access panel here. Okay. okay. Now, if you stand where I'm at over here and point your camera up to it, I'm going to point with my tape. Go ahead and stand over here where I was. Yep. Okay. There's a light switch there. Oh, yeah. And there's an outlet there. Oh, okay. okay. There's a light fixture. So there's lights up here, huh? Yeah, there's yeah. what we call a service light. Mm -hmm. So you turn the switch on and see this pre-insulated ceiling? Yeah. There's a, a plywood platform. So you can walk there. up there. So yeah. it's like a third floor. Right. Okay. Your mechanical equipment is up there. The light is up there. Okay. So people can see where they're going. Okay? Yeah. Now here, there's an outlet there. And then when that, when, where that, it, uh, boxes, uh -huh. there's another outlet there where that box is plugged into. So there are outlets up there. So if anybody's working up there for an extended period of time, oh. they have light they and have outlets. outlets to plug into for power. Okay. Okay. And that's that. Yep. Okay. A little out of So now here, if you're coming from the bedroom this direction, this light switch here, we'll turn that light on and off. Mm -hmm. And then this light switch here, we'll turn that light on and on. Mm -hmm. okay. Now here we're in the, in the master bath here. We have three switches here. One switch is gonna turn on your two vanity lights, which is that one and that one there. Okay. A second switch is gonna turn on ceiling lights. I believe it's these two. Uh huh. A third switch is gonna turn on this exhaust fan here. Oh, okay. okay? And then we have two additional switches over here. Now, one switch is dedicated to the shower light. Only, okay. And the other switch is dedicated to the tub light on. Okay. Okay. All right. Shower. This will be glass here. Yep. Tile. Yep. Tile will go from the floor here all the way up, over, and above the shower head. And all right. then back down again. Your standard wall tile, whether six by six or other, yeah. and then usually the floor tile is the small two by two squares mm -hmm. or the river rock or pebbles. Okay. Okay. Sinks. Each sink has a 20 amp service outlet. Mm -hmm. This sink has its 20 amp service outlet. Yep. And then you have heating and air conditioning there. Yep. Okay. And then that brings us to our master bath water closet mm -hmm. privacy door here two switches here one switch for an exhaust fan one switch for a light mm -hmm. toilet location here water supply line to your toilet there and that is that my friend yep now one thing also energy wise you see your roof it's all insulated that's what we call roof deck insulation now yeah Houses across the street over there, and then those houses over there, they don't have this. Mm. This is the 2022 energy code now. Okay. Now, in addition to that, insulation, let me show you something here. See this here? Measuring stick. Oh, yeah. They're going to fill it with the yeah. in loose fiber. In addition to that roof deck insulation, yeah. we still owe you approximately 20 inches thick of attic insulation. Attic insulation, okay? yeah. So these attics are well insulated. Now, the roof tile 
right? Right. That they're putting on right now, now it is labeled as cool tile, radiant barrier tile. That oh. reflects heat. Okay. To help this attic stay cool. Cool, yeah. Okay. So it keeps the AC off longer, it keeps the heater off longer. Nice. And that's that. Do you have any questions on the house? And then we're going to read the office.